it sounds like Marvel's Ironheart isn't coming out until 2025. Now, of course, in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, they introduced us to Ironheart. Uh, a young college student who apparently is as smart as Tony Stark was able to design and create her own Iron Man outfit, an Iron Man suit of armor. And now we knew in advance, like before Black Panther Wakanda Forever even came out, that they were going to give Ironheart her own show. That news was already out. We knew that going into it. So it was fairly important that they introduce the character well. And so we go into Black Panther Wakanda Forever, kind of looking forward to seeing how they're going to do it. And look, it's, it's all subjective. We all feel differently. I don't think they did a very good job introducing the character because the way they wrote her, which could have been a really interesting character, I, they just didn't write her in any way that made me all that interested. And again, I, you know, I was lamenting to Rob before we even started the show. You guys have heard me cry about this before. Why does everything in Marvel ultimately have to be an Iron Man suit? Everybody has to have Iron Man suits, right? So, I mean, I, uh, yeah, War Machine, but Rhodey had to have an Iron Man suit. And then Spider-Man isn't cool enough, so Spider-Man had to have an Iron Man suit. You know who's not cool? The Dora Milaje aren't cool. Are you freaking kidding me? No, 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 you don't understand, John. The Dora Milaje aren't cool enough. They have to have Iron Man costumes, too. They gotta have Iron Man armor. Nothing's cool to the kiddies today, unless they have Iron Man armor. So we go with another derivative character with Iron Heart. Now, Iron Heart is in the comics. It's a relatively new comic book. Uh, so it's not like they got a lot of history or, or whatever with it. And uh, this comes to us from the folks over at CBR who wrote this. Per the direct... Marvel recently fired a listing for Ironheart premiere with the U.S. Copyright Office, which seemingly reveals a debut date of September 3rd, 2025. So uh, we got to wait a year for Agatha, and then you're going to have to wait another year for Ironheart. The registered date is listed as projected, and it could uh, be an approximation, and it may shift around if necessary. However, the listing suggests Marvel doesn't plan to release Ironheart before the late summer of 2025. Neither Marvel Studios nor Disney have confirmed this date. All right. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, number one, there's not a lot of Disney Plus shows that I'm looking forward to. This certainly isn't one of them either. I, I Again, I just think they did a bad job. It like, like, It's a story of three different takes, right? They introduced us to the character of Echo, right? In the Hawkeye series. Did not do a good job, and so I'm not, I don't care about the show. They introduced us to the new character of Ironheart in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I'm not looking forward to the show because I don't think they did a good job. However, they introduced us to Agatha in WandaVision, did a tremendous job writing that character. And so I'm super excited about Agatha. But, um, but I'll go one step further here, Rob. No one has told me this. This is pure speculation on my part. I don't think the show's going to happen. I, I, I really don't. Between Bob Iger coming out and saying, we need to cut back. We're, we're oversaturated with Marvel stuff on Disney+. Plus. Between that, the pushback of the date, the not super positive response to the character itself and having kind of what I consider to be a weak launch. But hey, it's all subjective. Maybe there are a bunch of you guys watching that thought it was a great launch for the character. I thought it was a little bit weak, but that's just me. And so I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think there's a solid like 60% chance this show doesn't happen at all. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. Signing your life away to a big wireless provider is kind of like being trapped on a roller coaster from hell. Sure, it looks like fun at first. They probably even threw in a free phone. But now you can't get off. Month after month of insane bills and unexpected thrills, like overages and surprise fees. If that sounds like your current big wireless plan, it's time to get off the ride with Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just 15 bucks a month. You guys know before I came to Mint Mobile, I was paying triple what I am paying now on the standard big wireless plan, and I will never go back. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped right to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. But anyway, Rob, what did you think about the introduction of the character in Black Panther Wakanda Forever? What do you think about this date move all the way to September of 2025? And, and what does that tell you about the possible future of the show? 
Well, I think, look, Marvel did in Civil War when they introduced Black Panther, T'Challa, T'Chaka, the whole, that whole introduction of that character and the way Chad Bozeman played him, brilliant. That character had a smashing debut in Civil War. We could not wait to see more Black Panther. That's the template. They gave us that template for how to introduce a character, make them integral to the plot of that film, and and cast an actor that is irresistible in the role. So that's what we expect. And I think that as much as, I mean, I liked Wakanda forever probably more than a lot of people did because it was a, an insurmountable task that Ryan Coogler had to take on. And I think he, he acquitted himself admirably and, and made a film that continues to be resonant and, and, and quite accomplished. That said, I found Ironheart to be shoehorned into that narrative. Uh, mm -hmm. And not only that, but uh, a shortcut of a character, a character that was already sort of fully formed that they just assume that we're going to love these characters and they're not giving us the underpinning uh, of a background or, or a reason to love these characters. I don't like the fact that the MCU is now just assuming that we're going to love all these new characters. They spent over 23 movies. They meticulously introduced each character and made us care through great writing and in WandaVision too. I mean, there's a reason WandaVision now, we have a lot to compare it to, I think stands head and shoulders above any other Marvel streaming show. And it's not perfect. You know, I don't think WandaVision is by any means perfect, but the characters like Agatha Harkness had screen time. You know, we had to meet her, get to know her, experience her. Catherine Hahn, you know, bringing a certain nuance to the role. We had hours to get to know that character and, and see her interact with, with a, up uh, two previously established characters and i you know to to give us an echo show where I, I like you i was not impressed by how echo was introduced in a less than impressive show so you've got hawkeye which was a little lackluster and you have a character that was also lackluster within a lackluster show so i mean i would love to see riri williams introduced and made into a great character but I have no interest in an Ironheart show because why should I have any interest in an Ironheart show? To juxtapose that, staying in the world of Wakanda a little bit, look at how they introduced T'Challa in Winter Soldier, right? They or, or Civil War, I should say. Look how they introduced T'Challa in Civil War. We had never had him on screen before. But by the time that movie ended, we had had a character that suffered loss. We got to see their conviction. We got a sense of their abilities, their personality, the world that he lived in. And he was just a secondary character in that movie. But it got us to the end of that movie. And we were like, yes, give us more of this T'Challa character. Yeah. And they just haven't been able to do it. Now, listen, you know, I said I don't think they're they're going to do the show ultimately. Now, if you look at this, you can bring up my screen here. This is from the set. I mean, they've already done a, a bunch of shooting, if not maybe even completed principal photography they were getting a, a look a little bit of a look with some of the quote-unquote green screen leggings with a practical iron top and all that kind of stuff so they've already shot it but i i just have a feeling there's still a lot more money to be spent on this in post-production and because of what bob Iger said about diluting the product that's why i'm saying i i don't think they're actually going to put this on air again i'm not saying it's a guarantee and nobody's told me that this is just me taking a wild baseless guess that i'm pulling straight out of my ass uh, it very well could get released. I'm just, I've just ha happened to think there's a really good chance they won't. I, I, I tend to agree with you, and I really don't understand why we haven't seen the Dora Milaje. There's your show. I mean, Denai Guerrera, Okoye. Uh, I mean, there's, a, you've got a, a peacekeeper force. We've seen the the Dora Milaje interact on a global scale, undercover in various films and now various shows. I'm like, why not give us that? Who didn't get excited when they showed up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier? We all did. We everybody got excited when they. I mean, uh, and, and they 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 have a much better presence. They're much more developed, and there there's a lot of. I mean, come on, give me a global secret agent show, fronted by the Dora Milaje. That's like, uh, hello, sign me up. <laughs> you can make a new streaming service if that's the only show on it. I'll subscribe. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.